Here we have a used 2022 Acura MDX. Now this one comes in the SH all wheel drive tech package in Fathom Blue Pearl. And then we have Greystone leather interior. For the powertrain, we get a 290 horsepower, 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, made into a 10 speed automatic transmission. But as we come around to the front end here, we do get LED headlamps, LED daytime running lights. I like the front end there, reminds me of the Acura cars. And it just, it looks very sleek. I'll give Acura that, they did a great job designing this. And these are 20 inch alloy wheels. We get passive keyless entry on all four doors to the door panel here, memory seat functions, blind spot monitor, and then we do have one touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors, power door lock controls, power mirror controls, and we can also power fold the mirrors too. We do get a power lift gate. We get that 12 speaker ELS sound system, and we can toggle our safety features here, electronic parking brake pull up to engage to the brake press down to disengage. And then we do have a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. But here's the power driver's seat. I am glad that we get four-way power lumbar support there. But I have that adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3 with longer legs. So as we check out the rear leg room here, big shout out to Ford Lincoln and Franklin for allowing me to review this MDX today. I'll leave a link below in the description. But I love having the rear blinds here like in the Honda Pilot. Let's go ahead and check, check out this rear leg room, excuse me. Make sure the seat's all the way back. So there's the leg room there. It's not as impressive as the pilot, I feel. And I think it has to do with these bulky seats having this black plastic part here. We do get seat back pockets on both sides though. And again, it's doable, definitely. And then I have quite a bit of headroom for this to have the panoramic sunroof there. So that's impressive too. Rear AC controls are here. We can control the mode, turn the whole system on or off, fan speed, etc. We have a 12 volt down there, two USB-A ports. And then that's just there. I'm assuming you can add another outlet over there with a package or a certain trim level. Bottle holders in the middle, storage cubby. We can remove this whole seat by pulling right here. And then when that strap is pulled up, you can lift this from the back, but it's hard to do it because I'm holding the camera with one hand. Now, this you can use to unlock and lock this middle seat and you can turn that into a third seat. But like this is a six passenger setup, which I actually like because that gives you a lot of space in the back there. And there's still quite a bit of leg room, but bottle holders are back there. And grab handle here. And then we can hang a plastic hanger hook or a metal hanger hook on there. I don't know why the light's not coming on, but okay. Now I'll show you how the seat folds. So from the third row, you have the button to get back there from up front, or you can hit that same button and you can get out from back there. And then you also have a latch that those go out for whatever reason, you just pull there. So I like how they did that. Fuel filler is there. And then as we come around to the back end here, we get signature LED tail lights. And then we're gonna lift that power lift gate. And while we're doing that, the spare is right underneath there around the exhaust. So that's interesting because I literally couldn't see it unless I got all the way underneath the vehicle. But storage here. We have a nice big side pocket here. If you want to put some in the back that you don't want to roll around. And then we also have hooks here if you want to hang a few bags, 12 volt. And then to fold this flat, all you have to do is pull here and push. And that's the difference in the room with the third row up and the third row down. Well, let's go to the front passenger seat. I like that we get that same power adjustability as you can see there, the lumbar. Then the seat back, seat bottom. There's a 12 volt here. Lockable glove compartment here. Owner's manual still in this one. And then we do have a window sticker here. And there you can pause anywhere you need to. Are all the standard features. You can see that good enough. And then stickers at 54, 625. Hold that back up for the next person. 
But the overall styling of the MDX again, I think it's a beautiful vehicle. On the inside though, so far it's showing that it comes from Honda. And depending on how you feel about that, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, how do you open this hood? Okay, I'm stupid. Right there. So that is very well hidden for a luxury vehicle. But there's that 3.5 liter. I like how the hood opens and shuts. It's sturdy, but it's not dangerous. Like I feel like I'm about to get my hand stuck in there. Now leather wrap steering wheel here, power tilt and telescope that. There's the horn there. Now let me just dive right into this screen. I am very, very disappointed in this. We do get FM, XM. We have Bluetooth audio, AM radio, wireless CarPlay, Android auto compatibility, but we have this awful, and I mean awful, infotainment system. I don't even, if I can't get in here and immediately do what I need to do, then there's a problem. And let me show you this. It is not a touch screen, so you can't even bypass this thing here. So, ugh, it's, it's annoying. Once you get used to it, it's not terrible, but it's just, again, if you're a, somebody who's just getting into one of these, this is gonna be a big turnoff, I think. But settings are in here. Vehicle settings, connections, like I literally don't even feel like fooling with this. Yeah, so I mean, that was a, a huge disappointment for me. But navigation screen is here, and you can go to find down here, find a destination by either, either using search, or you can set up a home, add a favorite, things of that nature. And then for the audio again, you can just go through that. I mean, this thing does not like me at all. So again, that's just something that's, ugh, bad idea. But backup camera, picture is very good. Guidelines follow you as you turn the steering wheel. And then down here, hazards, dual zone automatic climate controls. Now I like how this is set up. We can, all of this makes sense. Fan direction, temperature, fan speed, you have an on off button here, auto heated seats, or just you can decide what stage of heat you want. You do get three stages for the driver and front passenger. And then auto stop, big button there, brake hold, big button there. And this I do like. So that looks nice first and foremost. And you can click here to set your individual mode or you can scroll through snow, comfort, normal, and sport. Now for the 10 speed, shifting that, push button, press P, R, neutral, drive. And then you can go into the, the sport shift mode there and use the paddle shifters if you so choose. You can do that in the regular drive mode too. I'm lying. You can only do that in the sport mode. So that's interesting how they did that. I think in the Honda you can, but I could be mistaken there. I apologize. USB-C, USB-A inputs there. Again, all the buttons for that god awful infotainment system. Volume is here. Click there to turn the audio off. And then we can go through our tracks or radio stations here. But bottle holders there. We do have a wireless charging pad here. I don't know what this does, but center console, cubby space. There's a top tray. Pull this lever. You get that bottom tray with a power outlet or a 12 volt, excuse me and a USB-A charge port. Sunglasses holder. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt that sunshade back. And then those are the lights there. And it does go all the way back one touch. The sunshade does, and that's nice. And then there is the roof with one touch. And then there it is with two. Let's look at the back seat from up here. And I do like that we can close these at the same time. But back to the steering wheel, blinkers are here, auto high or auto low beams are there, low beams are there, and then high beams, flash. And then we have automatic wipers, so one time off, auto low high. We can adjust the auto 
wiper sensitivity there. And then we have our rear wiper there on intermittent off. Pull either side to get that rear wiper fluid and then you can pull up for the front wiper fluid. Now this I do like so we can turn the audio on or off here and then we have volume controls here and we can go through radio station presets here and then voice recognition this ask button you hit this and then it should pull up which you can use here on the left side of the screen in terms of your audio sources and then over here this is for going through your info on that right side so tire pressure monitors the all-wheel drive the g meter all of that can be full with and then in the gauge settings you can change your distance or units from miles to kilometers and then you also have a gauge layout and you can decide whether you want that advanced or crafted and i like the crafted view better but adaptive cruise can be turned on there set the speed gap adjust for that and then the lane centering is right there and you can cancel everything there so it's, it's definitely an interesting vehicle i can't think of an acura i've reviewed that's had this new setup here so this is kind of interesting for me push button start and finally there's the key fob there but next it's time for me to go ahead and take this acura mdx out on the road for a quick test drive so starting the test drive in this acura mdx for whatever reason this doesn't feel as big to drive as the the honda pilot which i like and I do like just the overall setup of all the gauges where everything is better than in that vehicle, even though it is pretty similar. So the pickup with the V6 is pretty decent. Again, I would have liked to have seen a turbocharged variant. Maybe there is one, I just haven't seen it. Um, this is, again, one of the few Acuras that I've driven. The local Acura store, not very nice to me, but this, I mean, it gets the job done with the the V6 having all-wheel drive. For me, though, I would just probably save 10 grand and go with a Pilot. This does look better, in my opinion, but it doesn't drive any differently, I think. I'm going to put it into sport mode, and then we're going to see how it drives now. But I can already tell that this thing is ready to go in this mode. It sounds good. It just, everything feels superb. But I don't know if that's a sound that's coming from the speakers or what, but it does sound much more sporty from the driver's seat. I'm gonna put it into the sport shift mode and then I'm gonna manually shift here. Gonna give myself a little space. And here we go. So quite impressive actually. And if you wanna get out of that manual mode while you're driving, just hold that plus paddle down and you'll go back into just the sport shifts here. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I'm gonna put it into the normal drive mode. Let's go ahead and test out this adaptive cruise with the lane centering so this technology is great and I've said this before with the the Hondas that I've reviewed very impressed by the overall system now it's not perfect and it's not meant to be a semi-autonomous system like you get with Blue Cruise or Super Cruise autopilot things of that nature but it is a pretty reliable lane centering and adaptive cruise control system. But final thoughts on the Acura, again, I like the, the looks outside. It drives like a Honda Pilot, which I like. Just this navigation screen can be extremely cumbersome. But other than that, it's a decent SUV. And this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2022 Acura MDX.